All righty. Hello, your 11s. I am taking a stroll and recording this video for you because I've been cooped up inside all day, all weekend, in fact, and the sun is shining. So I wanted to get this out to you, but also take a walk. So this is about your genre assessment. Okay. Now your genre assessment has three choices you can make for how you present that. All right, you can choose to do either a blog post that uses links to videos and images to help uh, the reader understand what you're talking about. You can do a podcast that is you recording. You're going to add some music to that. You're going to add some sound bites from the films that you choose. Okay, um, and I can show you how to use that. Or you can make a video. The video will have your voice. It will have clips from the uh, from the films that you choose, okay, um, and uh, you might do it in a PowerPoint if you want to, but you'll be recording the screen and it'll be a video. So, what is your task on genre? You want to look at how a certain how genres have developed over time, okay? So you would start with a description of a genre, and what element, what makes that genre what it is, okay? And then you'd pick three films. Those three films uh, are your choice, okay? But ideally you want to have them from the year 2000 and before because we're looking at things over time. So if you select comedy, for example, okay, you want to have three films from maybe the 90s, the 80s, and the 70s, okay? Um, some people have used the, the, the noughties, um, but I would prefer it if they were before then, especially if you're doing comedy, because there's heaps of films from before then, and we're looking for what is the most influential films for that genre, okay? So, you can find out what they are, because I don't expect you to have watched all of them, but you can find out what they are by searching them up on... Um, in Google, just look up in most influential action films, okay? Because there are certain films that made a big impact on the genre, okay? And that changes from film to film. So you pick those three films, and then from there, you will use those films as your evidence to talk about why they're influ influential and what they did for the genre, okay? So the way it might look is you'll start with an introduction that discusses what the genre is, okay? Let's get some cool angles going here. You might start with one that uh, explains what the genre is. Okay, first paragraph or first section of talking will explain that. And then you will move to um, the films, okay? Now for each film, you'll want to talk about the name of the film, when it was made, who made it, who stars in it, and why that film is influential, okay? If you're doing action films, you might pick something like Die Hard. Die Hard is a film from 1989, okay? It's influential to the action genre because it changed the way an action film was set up. And it also was one of the first action films in the 80s that didn't have a huge, muscly person like... Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, okay? And then you, so you could do that for each film and then you're done. You have 800 words or five minutes to do this, all right? I'm gonna move now to the PowerPoint that talks about genre and what genres are. Um, so that'll be right now. And here we are, film genre. So, Film genre, or how I learned to love cinema, an introduction to what makes a genre, okay? So genre films is, are what made me really love film, okay? Uh, you'll notice there it says hyperlinks in orange, key definitions in purple. This is for people taking notes. We did do this in class. All right, so genre is a French word that means type. And this can be applied to all sorts of stuff. You can do it for music. You can do it for film. You can do it for books, okay, or comic books. Recognize genre is all about deciding what type of moving image you are looking at, okay? To do this, we assess it by its main features, 
and these are genre conventions, okay? Genre conventions are the codes and conventions we've talked about in media studies. So what we're going to talk about are these conventions. Themes, settings, characters, story, plot, and narrative structure, mood, props, and significant objects. Firstly, let's remember what codes and conventions are. Codes are like the Lego bricks and conventions are what you make with them. Okay, so most films use the same codes, but they do them in different ways. Okay, so they the conventions change what you create. Filmmakers rely on people's ability to recognize genre when they promote new films to rouse the viewers' interest, expectation, and anticipation. This means that exploring the ways in which genre conventions are used to impact an audience is very important. Okay, so if we look at these covers, we can make assumptions on what those films will be about. Okay, uh, Final Destination has uh, what looks like a skull on the front, probably about things dying. Dumb and Dumber looks silly. It's probably silly. The Avengers have heroes in action poses, probably an action hero film. So we as an audience have expectations of genre and the films we go and see. Okay, so for exa example, if we saw Final Destination, uh, the poster for that, and then went and watched the film and it was much more like Dumb and Dubber, we would be a little bit put out by that. So film genre posters often follow a, say, a similar path. Okay, so like horror films, one large surreal image in the... Uh, dominates the poster, dark colours, low lighting. Comedies often have uh, bright, bold colours, light-hearted images, action, centralised character. These things follow a set path. Themes. All right, the theme is the central idea in a text. Let's look at an example. Okay. What's the problem? We live in a crime-ridden world. Who solves the problem? Cops. We need to be tough. By what means, tools, do they solve the problem? An eye for an eye. For what larger them thematic reason? Do whatever it takes to see justice done. We could make some assumptions by looking at that and what that theme, what genre that theme connects to. And it might be a detective series. Could be a cowboy film. Okay. Some themes that are reoccurring are things like relationship, Good or evil, revenge, loss of innocence, and war is hell, often seen in, in uh, war movies. Setting, very important when we're looking at genre. Settings is the prototypical setting or world associated with that genre. Okay, So, for example, westerns are often set in the Wild West in America. Gangster films are set in cities. Soap operas are usually... Filmed indoors, spy or thriller, feature exotic places, often urban international setting. Think about the opening of a James Bond film. Science fiction has futuristic worlds or spaceships or uh, lightsabers if you're watching Star Wars or lasers, okay? These things help us identify what genre we are looking at, okay? Setting can say a lot about the texts, its themes and how characters might act. It ha also helps some eye objects to become symbolic, okay? Symbolism is used throughout films, and we'll talk about that in significant objects. Characters. Characters do not exist in a vacuum. They both act and react to the events of the story. This creates tension and decides character. And what I mean by decides character is it helps the character evolve, decides the character of the person. All right. So a good character doesn't just live in the film. A good character was doing something before the events of the film and after the events of the film. Okay. And when we talk about storyline, ideally we want our characters to change throughout that story. There are also roles that certain characters play, okay? They might be the role of the hero, the heroine, the sidekick, the monster, the mentor, the shadow, the femme fatale, the villain, all these things. Does anyone know who those two people are in the image? If you do, awesome. That is the Lone Ranger and Tonto, which is particularly racist these days as 
tonto is a Spanish word for stupid, but the Lone Ranger is a hero and the sidekick is tonto. Okay. They have certain roles that they play. We expect heroes to do something and we expect sidekicks to do something. We also expect villains to do something. All right. Story, plot, and narrative. All right. These are three separate things that we're going to talk about. So, all stories are basically a lesson in values. Some theoreticians, theoreticians argue that why that's why we tell stories, to pass on social values that allow us to survive as a species. Some cultures, that's how they survive. That's how they do everything. We do it as well. There are people have been writing this down. Uh, Western culture has been doing it for a long time. Indigenous culture in Australia... That is their main form of, of passing down their culture through, through stories. In every story, it's about this, your central character or your hero or protagonist. Okay, The protagonist must go through some sort of change by the end of the film. This is the story. Okay, If a character doesn't go through change, then it's probably, there's probably not much of a story going on. E.g. in Star Wars... Luke Skywalker goes from a whiny farm boy to a rebel fighter pilot and picks up some good character traits. Sometimes, though, the character is the one who is simply not going to change, and we see this in our characters. Instead, through the hero's actions, actions they change the world. Okay, Think of Mad Max in, um, in the Mad Max films, Fury Road or the other ones if you've watched them, or Liam Neeson's character in Taken. If you're doing action films, I suggest watching Taken. It is absolutely brilliant. They're very set in their ways, okay? Those characters are not going to change, but things change around them because of their actions, okay? That's the story in some cases. So, story is the entire sequence of events, okay? It's simply in terms of sequence of events. It's In simple terms, it's a sequence of events. So when thinking of a story, it's A, B, C, D, Okay, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. All right, that's what story is. That's everything that happens in the film. Plot is slightly different. Plot describes a set of events as they relate to each other. So it's a cause and effect thing. Daryl needs a job, so he goes for an interview, and he gets the job, so he wins his dream girl. Okay, the plot usually concerns itself with specific points of the story, and the pattern for their relation. Basically, beginning, middle, end. Freytag's Pyramid. We have our opening, rising action, climax, falling action, closure. Okay, That is the standard uh, story structure Okay, or plot structure. We need things to happen. In rising, before we go from exposition at the start, something has to happen for rising action. Okay, and then something has to happen in the climax. Then we come to narrative structure. Narrative structure is how we tell story and develop the plot. Okay, so narrative is the ordering of those events. Okay, now we have standard narrative structure, beginning, middle, end, but sometimes things go in reverse. Uh, I suggest watching the film Memento. It is an absolutely brilliant film that has a narrative structure that keeps you guessing from the very start and is very, very clever. So story events can be set out in a chronological order, as a majority of films are, combined with elements from outside of the story or uh, outside of the story to better tell the audience what is going on, perhaps a flashback. We, often films use flashbacks for this or framed when the story is being told from someone else. Rose in Titanic recalling her voyage. Okay, so she is telling the story retrospectively. Okay. And remember, in, in films, the story might take place over, over a couple of days, a couple of months, decades, or it might even be real time. Okay. In mo most films, they only have 90 to 180 minutes. So here's a little diagram to help you tell the difference between plot and story. Plot happens within the story. Okay, so a plot point and a story point can be the same thing, but there's all sorts of extra bits within a story. Now, mood. Mood is the emotional tone of the film. 
Okay. Mood and atmosphere contribute greatly to any film, no matter the genre. Establishing the tone and atmosphere of a film is crucial to helping individuals enjoy and be involved in the film. And how do we use mood? We use our conventions. So that might be lighting, music, colors, or the tone, the way in which people speak. You'll see this. So all films will create a mood, but depending on the genre, it might be slightly different. Okay, so we're going to watch a little clip. This is from uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Okay, this is the opening clip. This is a Batman film. Okay, what I want you to pay close attention to is the music, the characters, and see if you can tell who the villains and who the heroes are, and the sound effects. Okay, and how those things are used to help build mood and build tension throughout this scene. The flight plan I just filed with the agency lists me, my man, Dr. Pavel here, but only one of you. First one to talk gets to stay on my aircraft. Or perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane. At least you can talk. Who are you? It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. You're a big guy. For you. Was getting caught part of your plan? Of course. Dr. Pavel refused our offer in favor of yours. We had to find out what he told you. Nothing. I said nothing. This plane. With no survivors. Expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. Have we started the fire? Yes. 
the fire rises. Calm down, Doctor. Now is not the time for fear. That comes later. So, what did you see there? How, how, see if you can identify what that music did. Next, props and significant objects. They can be symbols, metaphors, imagery, iconography that represents something, an idea or a value. E.g. in Toy Story, Woody having Andy's name on his boot means he, be he belongs. Okay? You can see this through all sorts of films. An example might be in the film Psycho, which some of you may have studied in English. Okay, throughout Psycho, there are pictures and statues of birds, birds of prey, usually, and there are also mirrors that reflect people that show that there are uh, that people have multiple personalities. Okay, so props and significant objects you'll find throughout all sorts of through many films and used as a form of symbolism. Okay, to symbolize something connecting to the theme. Genre and audience. So films impact people, okay? And people impact films. This is really important when we're talking about media audiences, okay? So influences of the genre on society may include copycatting, imitating clothing, language, and behavior. You've probably seen this, you probably remember this from when the It films came out, okay? And everyone was running around dressed as clowns and scaring people. That is the genre influencing society. Influence of society on genre may include political or, or economic cli climate. So at the moment we're seeing a lot of science fiction films that are set in dystopian worlds That's because around the world there are lots of uh, political leaders that are gr quite grim and not uh, doing good things for the common people. So developments could be technological or stylistic changes to the genre made over a period of time. So this is what you'll be looking at in your film, in your task because you're looking at films over time. All right. So depending on what technology is available, there you have the ability to do different things. So action films in the 70s are very, very different to action films in the 90s and in the 2000s and today because of technological advances. Okay, so audience makes an impact on genre and genre makes an impact on audience. Now, sometimes we can be challenging genre. Okay, so we have these genre conventions and sometimes people go completely against that. Filmmakers sometimes make choices that surprise the audience as they do not always fit the genre conventions the audience expects. One way they do this is to combine more than one set of genre conventions to attract a, a, the widest possible target audience. These films are known as cross genres. Audiences enjoy the complexity of cross genres and like to make predictions about plot and characters based on their understanding of the different conventions. For example, Cloverfield, which revolves around a monster attack on New York and is shown from the perspective of a small group of people, it seems to be aimed at fans of the action genre. However, it also uses the genre conventions of science fiction. The largely unseen threat is an alien monster documentary. The footage is shot using a documentary style or handheld camera and teen horror movie. The characters are all young. They face unexpected, unexpected intense threats. You'll see this a lot in films. Your action films like uh, the Marvel films are excellent at combining comedy and action and science fiction. Okay, they're cross-genre films, the Marvel films. Now, intertextuality. Intertextuality is something you would learn about in English, but filmmakers are all over intertextual references. Okay, filmmakers love film. Okay, so so what is intertextuality? A link between two texts. It's usually a comment or a quote or using similar themes and ideas. It could even be a prop or a character. Okay, now the example here is not great, but quoting the Bible in a film or paying homage to another text. 
Now, a perfect example of this is the TV series Stranger Things, and we'll watch a little clip here. On one side, you'll see shots from Stranger Things, and on the other side, you'll see shots from 80s and 90s films, okay, where the creators purposefully were trying to make that connection. drew first blood, not me. I drew first blood, so... What you are doing 
is looking at the history of cinema. Film can be regarded as being related to the history of society in which it is produced. Film can function as a history or as a source or a document, not only for its own aesthetic history, but for, the, for history in general. Film as entertainment was a new thing in the 1920s. Okay, They had silent films. And then the first films came out in the uh, 1930s with lots of sound. Okay, and then color film coming through in the 40s and 50s. Okay, when we look back through time at different films, we can see how technology and society have helped shape films and how films have helped shape society. And that is what you're going to do with all this. Okay, you this is our task. You are going to take the role as a content creator. You are either going, you are either a blogger, a podcaster, or a YouTuber. You have 800 words or five minutes, you're going to pick a genre that you like, and then you're going to pick three films from different decades from the 2000s and before, okay? And you're going to use them to help explain how that comedy has prog progressed and how those, sorry, how that genre has progressed and how those films connect to that, all right? So thank you. Make sure you comment below. Uh, in the reply button, always press the reply button and send me a message if you have any questions, guys. Take care.